Happy October, everyone! I wasn't planning on reviewing this game initially, but I've had a long few weeks and needed something lighthearted, so I kind of bought this on a whim. With that said, why not get some goosebumps before Luigi's Mansion 3 and my dark aspects on the series when it launches this Halloween? I say get your picnic lunch ready for now and take a gander while I explain what makes Untitled Goose Game worth dipping your webbed feet or rake into. The best kinds of video games allow for a little mischief making. We can't always be heroic, right? So in between restoring balance and saving kingdoms, please let me destroy these plum trees that give your life meaning. Discovering new and interesting ways to bother NPCs is my favorite pastime. So imagine my utter joy when a game channels the energy of both jumping on the heads of innocent townsfolk and incessantly blaring my car's horn for no reason other than to be obnoxious. That's where Untitled Goose Game comes in, starring the Inconvenience Incarnate, an unruly bird with goal of wreaking as much havoc on this peaceful little English village as goosely possible. Cut from the same cloth as the Katamari games in weirdness and aesthetic, look, the prince even gets a shout out. This is a sandbox stealth game where a checklist of tasks has you unraveling communal trust with style. The fun here stems from the creative ways in which you can cause misfortune by interacting with this world and its physics. You're a one goose gaggle on a sadistic streak. Controlling our feathered fiend is just fine. The way you run, or the way of the waddle, takes getting used to, but you'll become a fledgling of finesse soon enough. Extending your goose neck works like an ultra hand to snag objects from unsuspecting passerby. And in that moment where you run off with their treasures, the accompanying soft piano music ramps up as if to encourage your wild antics. Funnily enough, the sparing use of music is similar in a way to Breath of the Wild, but instead of careful, minimal instrumentation for emphasis on atmosphere in nature, Untitled Goose Game's classical sound design from Whimsy to Intense heightens the slapstick payoff. Getting back to control, it's important to note that there's a button mapped exclusively for honking which is the second best dedicated action next to Lack of Love on the Dreamcast and its button for urinating. Flapping your wings is another given ability, but only has one practical function in-game, so it's mostly used in adding flair to any successful shenanigans. With such simple mobility then, it is the items paramount to your pranking that provide the potential. I'm amazed at just how much work was put into giving all these objects unique interactivity for expanded gameplay or simple laughs. Bottles can be picked up and fit over your bill, muffling honks for example, while walkie-talkies allow you to seem like you're somewhere else for a sound distraction. It's the small touches, like sodding soap bars that slip across the map when dropped, that make me smile at how cleverly implemented each object is. With such a funny, smart little game, then what is there to dislike? Well, the only point of criticism I've seen others surface so far is the length of the game. And hey, if that's the only complaint, I'd say House House did a bang up job. Yeah, 15 and now $20 after that initial sale is a lot to ask for, in a game with a main campaign taking around 3 hours. But there are extra tasks to prolong that playtime, and I had even more fun with the timed challenges where you clear every task in an area again before the church bell rings than I did the vanilla run. But even so, the value really shouldn't be judged by how quickly you beat it. That isn't the point. UGG is like a toy box. You'll get the most enjoyment by simply messing around and discovering all its secrets. Think of the given checklists and hidden goals as suggestions for what to do. 
so you'll realize what's possible in this world and have fun experimenting to try things in ways you never thought of. For example, one level has our ghastly goose gathering laundry to wash. Displayed is every article of clothing needed to complete the mission. There's bras and socks off a clothesline, the cranky neighbor's slippers, it all gets dunked. You can, and are supposed to, I guess, make the man go barefoot, stealing one of his shoes to soak, or you can make him chase you to wade. If everything else is in already, and he steps foot into the water, your task still counted as completed. It didn't specify the slipper needing to be removed after all. These open-ended quests make up a good portion of the list. So try doing things unconventionally or out of order. Get someone to break the fancy vase. There's multiple ways to achieve that besides the obvious, so go nuts. That final mission is perfection too. It's unexpected and brings everything full circle in a way I won't spoil. Play through it, doesn't take much time, and you'll be glad to have gotten that out of your system. Having said all that and giving my thoughts on the game, I want to leave you all off with a small piece of trivia you may or may not have heard since following the game. In Japan, this untitled game actually does have a subtitle, because of course it does. Thanks for watching everybody, I'll see you on the 31st. Thank you.